Laser sights can deter threats and aid in quick target identification, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free gun dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here, 866-TALK-GUN, gets you in. That's our magic number. Uh, an awful lot of opinions and thoughts and guesses and <laughs> conspiracy theories about the uh, shooting, the attack in Las Vegas. Uh, one of the voices that has come out, a voice of reason I would offer, and I think it's based on lots of experience, John Farnham, of course, uh, one of the uh, best-known trainers, firearms trainers in the country. He and his wife, Vicki, of course, been doing this for a long time, teaching law enforcement as well as regular citizens, uh, lots of training about guns. But more than that, John, uh, I appreciate you being here. We were talking earlier, this is probably not a situation where your concealed carry gun would have done you any good, huh? If we're talking about the uh, the recent shooting in uh, right. Las Vegas, Vegas. Yes. the uh, uh, a handgun among people in in the venue who were victimized in the the concert area could not possibly have affected the outcome one way or the other. Had I been there and found it necessary to run through uh, to escape, run through dark parking lots and dark alleys, I'd still want my pistol with me. But uh, as far as affecting the outcome. Uh, of this uh, uh, event, uh, no handgun would have done anything. Right. Way or the you other. can't just turn around and throw bullets at a, the side of a building and hope it's. We know. have this retrospect now. We know we had a single shooter and, he, and where he was and all that. Had you been there, uh, you would have had no idea where any of these bullets were coming from. Uh, the, and even if you, uh, you know, were inclined to shoot in one direction or another, you'd have no idea. Uh, uh, where they were coming from, whether it was guy there locally. As it turns out, he was some distance away, but uh, no one knew that at the well, time. Well, are there things that you could have had with you? I mean, and, and you teach all of this stuff, handguns yes, and yes. defensive use and yes. trauma. and other. Right. What should we, if you're a responsible person who likes to take uh, control of your own safety and that for your family, what should we be thinking now? Well, uh, I recommend uh, to everyone, or uh, once you've been trained, of course, to go armed. Uh, go armed, going armed gives you uh, options you don't have otherwise. But in addition to that, as we already discussed, the, the, a pistol would not have affected the outcome at all, uh, in all likelihood. Uh, but uh, something that would be very helpful is a trauma kit. And we teach this. You know, We teach a course called Tactical Treatment of Gunshot Wounds. Uh, and I have a trauma kit on my person all the time, which includes uh, tourniquets and IBDs. Uh, IBD stands for is- Israeli Battle Dressing. It's a uh, it's a uh, preferential pressure uh, bandage that has uh, proven itself very effective at uh, controlling uh, bleeding. And uh, in addition, uh, we have uh, Quick Clot. Uh, where actually, it's combat gauze. It's it's a it's a hemostatic agent uh, impregnated into gauze, which you can actually stuff into a wound uh, in an effort to control bleeding. As I'm talking to you right now, I have that same thing in my pocket. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, I keep it all the time because I, yeah. when I run courses especially, I've got to be right there. If, if someone gets hurt, I've got to be right there. Exactly. I can't run back and access a trauma kit. That's, it also occurs to me that you're you're more likely to use that in a car accident that you come up upon. I mean, there's just any number of things. Somebody uh, decides to whack himself in the hand with a uh, axe or something out in camp. You need that. Absolutely. You know, I tell my students, you know, when it's your decision to go armed and you want guns in your life, uh, risk attaches to that. Just like deciding hmm. to own a chainsaw. You know, no uh-huh. matter how careful you try to be, uh, there's an element of risk that, that can never be eliminated. Uh, right. What we do in training, of course, is manage risk and reduce risk. But... Uh, as I tell my students, someday you may be confronted with a bullet hole, maybe a you. Uh, and uh, the vast majority of people who are shot don't die, and very few of them need to die when the people around them know what to do. 
Uh, and so that, I think, as a uh, responsible uh, gun owner, particularly a gun carrier, you've got a social responsibility to uh, uh, know how to treat gunshot wounds and have the equipment in hand to do it. Let me ask you, a ton of people out there say, well, I'll just slap a tourniquet on it. You know, I can always take my belt off and use that. Clearly, people have not had training. A tourniquet that's designed as a tourniquet. We prefer the soft tee. Uh, and there's the, the cat is also wonderful. There's there's any number of uh, you know uh, field tourniquets out there, but any of them uh, that are designed as a tourniquet are infinitely better than makeshift tourniquets. Uh, not that a makeshift tourniquet couldn't work, but uh, one thing we emphasize in our class: a tourniquet is only relevant when you can get it on fast. Uh, a person can bleed out with, in less than a minute. And if you can't get it on fast and shut that faucet off, it becomes a moot point. And so, uh, yeah, all this makeshift stuff all sounds glamorous, but the fact is you really need good equipment that's designed to do what it's designed to do. And you need to know how to use it. Yes. You know, the the three big uh, uh, life-threatening uh, events in a case of a gunshot wound are, of course, loss of fluid, compromised airway, and attention pneumothorax, uh, which is associated with penetrating chest wounds. And uh, you've got to know what to do. You have to recognize the symptoms, know what to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'll save a life. And yep. the Columbine shooting here in Colorado here, it's been a number of years now. Uh, but uh, uh, it's been said, and I agree with this, that no one should have died. Uh, the people hmm. who died in that incident bled to death. And they bled to death because no one got to them. And uh, the people who do did get to them eventually got to them too late. I suspect that's partially true with this Las Vegas shooting. I suspect a, a number of those uh, victims just bled out uh, because the people around them were not equipped, didn't know what to do. And, and, of course, they were just overwhelmed because there's so many victims. Let me ask you, John, if people want to get uh, involved, want to take some of your classes, how do they go about that? Uh, the, the best thing to do is go to our, our webpage, defense-training.com. Go to our website. You'll see our schedule. Uh, my phone number is there. Uh, you can call me, or you can uh, you can sign up directly for a course. We're uh, doing a number of courses between now and the end of the year, as you might imagine. We're pretty busy. There's just a lot of interest, and uh, uh, it just seems right now all of Western civilization is just being overwhelmed. If it's not a hurricane, it's a shooting. Now we have fires in California. Uh, we're just being overwhelmed with disaster right now. That spurs interest in this kind of thing. And I see you got, I'm just with your website, you got a two-minute uh, teaser video right there on uh, tactical treatment of gunshot wounds yes. just to get people started. So that's excellent. Yes, uh, and we've got, uh, we have a whole video series. Uh, the, ah. It's uh, called the Operator Series. You can take the tactical treatment of gunshot wounds course actually online. Uh, I do it in person, of course, but you can do it online, and there's a, a, a lot of other information in the operator series. It's all on the web page. If you go over there and find it interesting, you can sign up and, uh, and start your journey toward being a competent operator. Defense-training.com. John Farnham, John and Vicki. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it. I love reading your writings. You are a clear thinker, man. You know why I say that? Because I agree with you, so you must be smart, right? <laughs> I, uh, I've been called a lot of things. I don't get called smart very often, but uh, uh, I hope I can advance our art, and I hope I can help our civilization in these troubling times. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, don't go far. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. Double Tap Ammunition and Colt Ammunition, manufactured by Double Tap. Using top-of-the-line components, made in the USA, and hand-inspected. Choose from 481 loads in 82 calibers. Defense. Hunting. Competition. Double Tap. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. What's important in a gun safe? Security, reliability, safety, good looks? It all comes down to quality. Quality that's built in from the beginning. Liberty Safe has made quality products for 29 years right here in the USA. 
Trust your guns, your valuables, and your safety to Liberty Safe. Did you ever regret buying quality? I didn't think so. Get the best. Whatever your budget, get a Liberty Safe. LibertySafe.com. The Ruger pistol that started it all is now even better. The Ruger Mark IV has the same great look as the Mark III, but now its simple one-button takedown means less time taking apart your gun and more time shooting it. Disassemble it in seconds for no hassle cleaning. Learn more about the Target, Hunter, and 2245 Light Mark IV Series models at Ruger.com. The Ruger Mark IV, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, with the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Cold defense ammunition, manufactured by Double Tap. Real defense ammo, designed with maximum effectiveness in mind. Have confidence in the performance of your defensive ammunition with Cold Defense by Double Tap. Available at your local retailer today. All right, back with you here. Tom Gresham, 866 Talk Guns. We are open lines, so if you have a, a gun you want to talk about, ammo that you have a question about, how, a simple how to shoot, whatever it is, we will talk about that too. Just dial Tom Talk Gun. That gets you in here. Larry did that. He's in Fort Smith, Arkansas on two. Hey, Larry, you have a, a range report for us, it looks like. Yeah, um... I'm an American, and I'm married to a Vietnamese woman, and uh, mm-hmm. she had some friends fly in from Vietnam a couple of weeks ago, and she wanted me to take them someplace because you know they're, they're, this was one of the one of the man's first trips mm-hmm. uh, to Amer- to America. She okay. wanted me to take them somewhere that they would remember, something to do something with them that they would remember. Well, I know in Vietnam guns are illegal. The only okay. people who have guns in Vietnam are the the police and the criminals. So I took them to, her, to the gun range, and oh. there was seven, there were seven of us all together, including my wife. Uh-huh. And I gave them a, I gave them a little introductory gun safety course, you know, about the trigger control, key where to keep your fingers, you know. And it was a little touch and go, but but they got it, they understood. And I put a nine millimeter in their hand, and and I let them shoot for the first time. Uh, a, a gun, and they were really, they really did well, and they had a lot of fun, and huh. it was, it was just something that I could give to them, and I know that they'll remember it for the rest of their life. Huh? Uh, I got to ask you. I'm, I'm listening to some background sounds there. Are you in an air show or something? <laughs> no, actually, I'm sitting alongside the interstate. I didn't oh, okay. Want to get, get out of- that's, that's traffic going by. I'm thinking, is a jets going by? What is that? <laughs> no, that's that's just traffic. Oh, okay. I didn't want to lose connection. I'm getting. I'm a photographer, and I'm getting ready to get out of phone range, and I didn't want to lose you, so I pulled off the road. So, what kind of photography do you do? Uh, landscape, waterfalls, things like that. Oh, okay. I've been busy posting stuff. I, one of the things I do when I get up here to uh, Idaho is I shoot lots of landscapes. Yeah, so, uh, I love it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a passion. It's like all these other things we do. Uh, we you know can take our passions and spend all the money we got on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's what it's we do. Photography is, is uh, actually probably a more expensive hobby than than guns. <laughs> you know, what I have figured out a long time ago is that there's no such thing as an inexpensive hobby. Whatever it is that you want to do, you will spend all your available income on it. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I just I want to applaud you for taking these folks out shooting. I guess the bottom line is, did they enjoy themselves? They they did, and uh, they told me one of them told me, you know, I told I was standing at the line with him, and I had he had the gun in his hand, and and I told him, you know, you just squeeze that trigger and make it make it surprise you, mm-hmm. you know, when it goes off. And he told me later, he said, Larry, I was scared, but mm-hmm. he said it's fun. And once they started shooting. And they, they all actually did pretty well. They listened to instruction, and and I, I even got my wife up there, and it was it was really a surprise. We've been married ten years, and she's never touched again. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, okay. I'm gonna switch back here. Well, another question: uh, When you're out shooting landscapes, that means you're out away from everything. You're you're beyond cell phone service. Are you carrying when you're out shooting pictures? Yes, I am. Yeah, Yeah, because you're a long way from anybody coming to help you. Yes, I am, and I thought of that, and that's why I carry. And, and, you know, I've got a lot of uh, expensive equipment with me, and Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's just bad people out there. And, you know, I just, I do, I carry. I mean, look, uh, most people are good. Most people are friendly. They'll help you and all of that. But it doesn't take but one encounter with one of those bad guys to ruin everything. So I appreciate it. Again, Larry, thank you for uh, taking those folks out shooting, and congratulations. Well done. I appreciate that. And, uh, hey, F8 and be there, my friend. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. That's that's the, an old line for t- photographers, F8 being an F-stop, an aperture, uh, basically a camera setting, the whole phrase was F8 and be there, which means the main thing is you got to be where I always say, if you want to take interesting pictures, go stand in front of something interesting. It's uh, not unlike some of our shooting stuff. Hey, if you want to go uh, have an interesting time hunting, go go somewhere and hunt, which brings me to one of the things I'm doing out here in Idaho is we're going to be going on a deer hunt, uh, actually going out tomorrow, setting up camp and probably be out there for the next few days. Uh, hunting mule deer, and of course, as you would, would figure, I'm driving into Cascade, the m- thriving metropolis of 900 people of Cascade, Idaho, where I'm <laughs> broadcasting from in a moment. Uh, in fact, I can, if I lean over, I can almost see, there were four mule deer standing next to the road in town. <sighs> Have you ever had that happen? You go out and hunt like for a week and you come back in and you see one as you come back into the uh, the city limits. You're going, yeah, that's where they are. They weren't where I was. That's where they are. Well, I'm going to be shooting a 308. Uh, it's kind of a, a do-everything cartridge, if you will. Is there anything that you can't do with a 308 at least as far as North American hunting. I'm talking about big game now. Yeah, it would be a bit much for prairie dogs or something, but I'm thinking antelope, deer, elk, yeah, no problem. Moose, no problem. Use good bullets. Black bear, certainly. Grizzly, uh, yes, it would work. It would not be my first choice. Uh, But if somebody said, hey, you can go on a grizzly hunt, but you have to use a 308, I'd say, okay, we'll do that. I wouldn't turn down the hunt because of taking a 308. But certainly sheep, um, actually anything, a wide variety of bullet weights, anything from um, 110, although that would not be a hunting bullet for most things. But say probably for me, I would start at 150 and end at 180, honestly. Um, it's interesting, way back... We talked about bullet weight primarily when we, were, when we were talking about which load and which bullet to use for what game we talked bullet weight. Remember? We said, well, you know what? Well, you could use a 150 for deer, but if you're going to go hunt elk or moose, you'd want the 180 grain. Why did we do that? Well, two reasons. One is that we wanted to have enough bullet left after it broke up to keep penetrating because bullet design wasn't that good, frankly. And the other is with more weight, you get a longer bullet, and with a longer bullet, you get higher sectional density. And sectional density gets you uh, penetration. Now, that's kind of pushed aside because we have controlled expansion bullets in 150, 160, 165, rather, and 180. Pick what you want. Pick what shoots in your rifle, 
and you could probably get the performance you want with all of them, even if you were hunting elk with a 150 grain bullet, as long as it was a deep penetration bullet. So, uh, fairly interesting. Let's go to line three. Tom's with us out Hemp Hill, Texas. Tom, you had a question about suppressors. What are you looking at here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I've always been uh, with the understanding that as long as you were uh, less than 1,150 feet per second, you were suppressed. But once you got over 1,150 feet per second, the suppressor didn't do you a whole lot of good. Uh, on on high-powered rifles, uh, mm-hmm. such as what was suggested on this uh, thing in uh, Las Vegas, uh, mm-hmm. that a uh, suppressor would have been a whole lot worse. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what's the story yeah. there if you're over yeah, 150 you, you, feet? No, nah, you're right. Hillary Clinton says, well, imagine how much worse it would have been if he had been using a suppressor. Of course, what she's trying to do is stop the Hearing Protection Act from passing. So she said, well, you know, if he had to use a suppressor, no one would have known where the shots were coming from. It's malarkey. Uh, first of all, nobody knew where the shots were coming from anyway because the sound's bouncing off of everything. But to your point, Tom, when you – and uh, what we're talking about is the speed of sound. Eleven, Roughly 1,100 feet per second is the speed of sound. It varies by humidity and altitude, but just call it – for big round numbers, 1,100 feet per second. If your sh- bullet's going slower than that, it does not make a – it doesn't break the sound barrier. You know, a sonic boom. Well, for us, it's a crack. If it goes faster than that, yes, it's, you're going to get this big crack. So a suppressed AR-15 sounds has about the same sound signature as a jackhammer going off. It reduces it from somewhere in the 150 decibel range down to about 135 decibels, still very loud and still not hearing safe, but it will help protect. In fact, we just had uh, one sheriff's department, they're getting suppressors for all of their deputies' ARs as a way of um, trying to help their hearing. But yeah, those who are trying to kill the Hearing Protection Act are saying, well, this would have been terrible. But no, you, you got it exactly, Tom. It is... Uh, A suppressed rifle is a little quieter, but it's still very loud. It is better for us shooting, but this idea that it makes it silent, people are watching too many movies and they don't know anything about it. The sad part is they are very proud of being ignorant. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. I like taking the show on the road. I am up in Idaho. I've been doing some photography and just loving that. And, uh... It's really one of my first passions. It was funny when, when I was growing up, of course, my dad was a magazine writer and photographer. And so we always had editors and writers around. And I remember talking to him because I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'm going to go study writing. And one of them said, no, you really don't want to do that. Why is that? He said, well, you know, this was an editor. He said, uh, study photography. Get good at photography. He said, because he says, we can fix your writing, but we can't do anything about your photography if you didn't get the picture. <laughs> oh, Okay. So that's uh, what I went to school for. So I've been doing photography uh, seriously for uh, five decades now. Love that. So having some fun here. Going to be doing some uh, deer hunting. Uh, when I take the show on the road, though, one of the things, of course, and you, you do the same thing. You travel. You're, you're away from your home. You wonder what's going on back home. Is everything okay? Uh, one of the things I've been doing is I've, I've got video cameras set up. i uh, been working with the guys over at Blink and pretty cool outfit. Uh I've got these two little cameras. They're like, I don't know, size of uh, a pack of cigarettes, probably about what you'd say. And the cool part is I set them up so that you've got motion detection and I get an alert. So if there's motion, you could have them outside. You can have them shooting through a window. You can have them you know, inside the house. You can put up as many as you want. And you get an alert when you get this, uh, when anything moves. One of the ways that people have been using it, it's very cool. If UPS or FedEx leave something on the front door, you, if somebody else comes and picks it up, you would know that. But also, you just got to get alert. Hey, there's a package there, and you could call somebody and go pick that thing up. But anyway, the, the company's called Blink. Uh, really uh, very cool, and 
I am not the most technological advanced guy, and I was able to set these up as a piece of cake. It really works well. Uh, they, they're they working with us, and they said, hey, if you want to, uh, you can have this package deal. You can get three of these Blink cameras for what the other guys charge for, just one, plus 10% off. What you do is go to BlinkProtect.com slash gun talk. We've got a special deal there, okay? It's BlinkProtect.com slash gun talk. you got to use the, the slash gun talk. One more time. BlinkProtect.com slash gun gun talk take a look at it i think you're going to like what you see there let's go to line two mary's with us out of medford oregon hey mary you're on gun talk hey yeah um i was online even just as uh earlier last night and i was watching uh youtube with um this guy who calls himself a scientist and he was doing a ballistic acoustic ballistic on the shooting, and he says he's got proof acoustically wise that there was more than one shooter, and that he the second one was down as close as 250 was it meters down there near the staging mm. floor, or down there near the Masonic Lodge, the gas the Mary, apartment. Uh, let, yes. let me just let me just stop you. Stop looking at this junk. There is so much junk out there right now about this. I, I just, I don't believe any of it. You know, the conspiracy theorists are out, and, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to get the truth about it, but I know that all these people say, I have acoustic proof. No, you don't. Well, I have video that shows, no, you don't. I, you know, No, they don't. Nobody knows right now. The police are trying to figure it out. The FBI is trying to figure it out. And I think we all do ourselves a disservice if... We buy into this, and we get whipsawed back and forth trying to figure out what, what are they talking about, what's really going on here. So I, I would just encourage you to just simply don't pay attention to that. Don't seek it out, for heaven's sakes. And when somebody sends you one of these links to it, say, thank you very much, delete. And in a week or a month, we'll have a much better idea of what happened. But I'm just going to tell you, I, I just think... All this stuff is junk at this point. I'm not paying any attention to any of it. And if you just for everybody who wants to send me this stuff, I am deleting it. I'm not watching it. I'm not reading it. I'm not opening the emails. I don't know what's and look, thank you for the call. I'm sorry. But, you know, just good Lord. Uh, we we need to be careful about our sources of information. We have to be selective. And. I don't know what the motivation is of people who are saying, I have acoustical proof there was more than one shooter. I have. Well, right now, the sheriff is saying there's one shooter. Do you not think they have a pretty good idea what was going on in that room and in other places at this point? I don't know. I just, I, I guess, let me, put, let me turn around this way. What good, what benefit does it serve to spend any time or mental effort on this? I mean, it's, I guess it's entertaining if you want to say this is my form of entertainment. And that's all well and good as long as you're not taking any of this stuff seriously. Just, just kind of my take, just my take. All right, let me switch back to the, uh, the hunting side of things. So I was talking about that. If you had to pick one rifle, one caliber to go hunt anything in North America, and I know we do this occasionally, but it is still fun. And I have two or three that I could pick. Um, kind of, I still kind of slide over toward the Magnums, picking up a Magnum just because it'll do everything. And I shoot Magnums okay. But as I go along year after year, I find that I don't need a Magnum to take almost any game animal out there. But if you had to pick one, say, all right, I'm going to use this one caliber for all hunting in North America, what would it be? Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. Used guns can be a great value, but you have to know who you're buying from. What if you could buy quality used guns with a lifetime warranty from the Internet's largest online reseller? That's what you get at Dewey'sGuns.com. They stand behind every firearm purchase for life. If you have a problem, they'll either fix or replace your gun. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, and more. 
Check out their inventory today at Dury'sGuns.com. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. If you love to shoot sporting clays, Mossberg has just the gun for you. The new Pro Series Sporting is a full-featured target gun that fits well and points naturally right out of the box. Designed in conjunction with Gil and Vicki Ash of OSP Shooting Schools, the Mossberg 930 was developed to work with you to make clay shooting easier, more consistent, and more enjoyable. This fall, head out to the range and break more clays with the new Mossberg 930 Sporting. Learn more at Mossberg.com. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. What are you hearing out there from people after the Las Vegas shooting? Are there gun owners that you know who are saying, well, yeah, we ought to be able to compromise. We ought to be able to ban bump stocks. I see we already have a lawsuit against Slidefire, the maker of the bump stocks. But the thing is, there is this law now. Protection in Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. That was passed a number of years ago as a result of the Democratic-led effort to destroy the firearms industry. All of it. Every bit of it. You remember when they had all the lawsuits against uh, gun makers of cities? New Orleans started it, but I think there were as many as 30 lawsuits against gun makers saying, we're going to sue them and make them pay for crime in our cities. Now, these are companies that are selling a legal product, a highly regulated product, a a product that when used correctly does not hurt people, but they want to sue for the misuse. And the whole idea was, and they said, they were very clear about it, they said, our goal is to destroy the firearms industry. They cannot possibly stand up against all of these lawsuits. We will basically sue them out of existence and had once had only one of those cases been successful, all gun makers would have closed because they would say, we can't possibly have insurance that insures us against the misuse by a third party of our product. So that's how we got the protection in lawful commerce and arms act. You cannot hold a gun company or a gun seller responsible for the misuse of their product by a third party. I think that's going to stop this lawsuit against Slidefire. At least I would assume it would. Line one, Bill is with us out of Reno, Nevada. Bill, one caliber, hunting everything in North America. What's it going to be? Seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Why is that? Uh, we had this discussion yesterday, my son and I. Uh-huh. I've got so many rifles. I don't have a seven mag, but he's looking to buy one because he's mm-hmm. been using all of mine all these years, all the different calibers I have. But mm-hmm. I said, Dad, which one do you think would be a great all-around rifle? And we just both came to the conclusion, 7-millimeter Magnum. Um, they've been around a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are a Magnum, but the recoil is not horrendous. It's like the 30 calibers. you got a bunch of different bullet weights. And yep. uh, I just think uh, that would be my choice. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think I do not disagree one. with you. I, you know, I think the 7 Remington Mag is, I've called it the light Magnum. And you, you made the point. Yeah, it's a Magnum, but it doesn't kick like a thirty caliber Magnum. It has a little bit less recoil, and you put good bullets in it, and you can shoot a long way and hit things hard. That yeah, would be yeah. very close to the top of the list for me, too. 
All right. Good deal. All right. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate that. Now, Al has a different thought. He's out of Rogue River, Oregon, um, on two. Hey, Al, what are you thinking here for your take one? I'm good. Uh, You're breaking up a little bit. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, I do I do that occasionally. Oh, that... <laughs> uh, one caliber. Okay? What, yeah, I hear you. What, one caliber. What's it going to be? Thirty odd six. Why? My dad. My dad carried a thirty odd six for all his life, and um, uh, when I turned sixteen, uh, I bought a three hundred magnum. And um, I'll tell you what, um, his thirty odd six. Uh, I hand load, have all my life. I'm six years old. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll tell you what, um, his 30 odd six loaded with 165, 68 grain uh, uh, boat tails, soft mm-hmm. point boat tails. Right. Um, between the two of us, we could kill just about anything you could put on the surf. Well, you know, and the thing that's interesting, and people have learned that you can shoot a lot farther with a thirty out six or a three oh eight now than they used to think you could. We got good scopes, you can dial it in, you can do all of that, and still hit hard enough to to take a, a big buck or a bull. So I, I, I'm with you there, man. Thirty out six is a good one. In fact, uh, line three, appreciate the call. Line three, Daryl's with us out of uh, Minnesota. Daryl, I think you're going to be agreeing here. What do you think? Smart man, I shoot the same thing. Third got six. I load a 180 grain Acubon at about 2,800 feet per second. Ooh, nice. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's a it's a great great cartridge. And I think with all the new powders, I think a lot of people are looking past it at the mag. You know. You know, I'm I'm just the thing is, Daryl. I appreciate the call, sir. I'm just not sure that the the third out six is ever going to catch on. I mean. It's only been around for 111 years. 30 out six means 30 caliber 1906. For those that don't know, <laughs> 100. Is that, is that right? Did I get that right? 111 years. I think it is. Yeah, amazing. Hey, uh, line four. Jim's with us out of Eagle Point, Oregon. He's got his choice. Hey, Jim, what are you going to be carried if you had to pick one? Well, I own more than one. They're 308s. I, I I usually actually carry a Model 88 Winchester. It's an older oh. gun, 22 inch. I love the 88. That's a lever action. I, I shot my first year with a Winchester Model 100 and 308, the semi-auto version. Yeah, I have that version I got from my grandfather. I also have a 30 6 but, you know, the 308, um, for me, it's just a matter of uh, dialing in the right bullet, the right amount of grains. Uh, right now I'm actually shooting the EDLX uh, 178 grain for elk hunting. The elk hunting season is going on now in Oregon, and I was just came down to go to church today. But it's got a very, very high coefficient rate. And once you understand the coefficient rates and the arc angle of the bullet, uh, you know, I, I don't have any other reason to go to any other gun, although I have mm-hmm. other guns. I really like the 308. I'm, I'm with you. I, I think 308 just flat works. Um, and, you know, I appreciate that. Let's go to Eric in Junction City, Kansas on one. He's going to go a little bit different direction here. Hey, Eric. Hi. I was thinking 25-06 in the Remington 7600. Interesting. A semi-auto with... Uh, pump. Tw- oh, oh, you go with the pump. Okay. Um, yeah, I was thinking the 7400. So a pump, 25-06, uh, 25-grain bullet. I would agree with you that on that for most things. There are going to be some people who are going to say a twenty five caliber is a little light on elk or maybe moose, although I have a, I know people who use it very successfully. Again, good bullets is, is the, the real thing there. I appreciate that, sir. Oh, comparing three oh eight and thirty out six, once the bullet leaves the barrel, there's no difference whatsoever. Yeah, you, you might get 100 feet per second more out of an odd six, maybe, but it depends on the load. You're shooting the same bullets, basically going the same uh, velocity. You're gonna, you could have a little bit shorter action in a 308 than you would with 30 out six, and it may be that the 308s tend to be slightly more accurate, but honestly, it's down to personal preference at that point. Do you have a favorite? If you said, this is the one, I can only have this one for all hunting in North America, what would it be?
All right, back with you. 866 Talk Gun gets you in here. Uh, in just a little bit, we're going to be talking about a, a new gun that's going to be pretty interesting for you to uh, to hear about. We love announcing new things here. Right now, let's go to the phones. Uh, line 2, Bruce is with us out of McAllister, Oklahoma, where it sounds like a problem gun. Bruce, what's going on? Yeah, well, I'm actually a cheesehead. I'm a truck driver, so I'm going through McAllister. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, 308 has been my round forever. Mm-hmm. I used to shoot a Remington 742. And I loved the gun, but it was so old, I quit using it. Okay. So uh, I bought this Savage 11 BTH, which is a beautiful-looking gun. Mm -hmm. And I have tried so many different rounds through it, and I cannot get it to shoot accurate. Hmm. All right. Um, Let's troubleshoot for a second here. I'm going to ask the hard question first, okay? We're going to eliminate you as the problem. Can you shoot other guns and make them shoot accurately? I could take my 742 at 200 yards and hit an 8-inch gong freehand. Okay, so you're shooting this off a bench. What kind of groups are you getting at 100 yards? At 100 yards, they're like 5 and 6. 5 and 6 inches? Yeah. And you got a scope on here, right? I got a Leopold Variax 2. Okay. Uh, wow. And I see that you've tried different barrel, uh, rather different bullet weights. You've tried different things. How old is this rifle? It's uh, three years old, but I broke it in and I couldn't get anything to hit the paper for the longest time. So I put it away and used my 280 for a long time. And I just started fooling around with it again. Mm-hmm. And. For the longest time, I couldn't hit the paper. All right. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have you do two things, okay? The first is you have other rifles. Swap out the scope. It's not likely, but I have seen problems with guns. It turned out we were chasing a bad scope. I mean, you know, Lupo makes good stuff, but but it could happen. Yes, it could. I, I actually took that scope off the old 308 I had and put on this one. Mm-hmm. So that's why I thought about that a while back, but it's like, well, it shot fine off the Remington. You know, haven't done anything as far as dropped it or moved it, but right. that is a possibility. I would, I would say that would be the one thing. Go ahead and do that. If that doesn't work, then call Savage. Uh, just, I mean, just call them and say, look, this is what I got, and here's what they're going to do. Guarantee you, they're going to say, well, uh, send it back. We're going to take a look at it. If they can't get it to shoot, they're going to replace it or fix it for you because they don't want you to have a five-inch gun. Uh, trust me, and you know, a five-inch gun, a hundred yards, a five-inch gun, that's worthless. You can't go hunt with that. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say try swapping the scope. That would be the main thing right now. And if that doesn't do it, call Loophole, I mean, not Loophole in this case, uh, call Savage and talk to them and say, this is what's going on. It's never shot from the first moment I got it. It's, I've always had this. Uh, what do we do? And then follow their lead. I think they're going to take care of you. They, they generally always do. And, and look, and after you get it all fixed up, give me a call back. Let me know how it goes, okay? I will do so. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Bruce. Uh, and, Brian, I'm going to get you in here. you got 20 seconds, Brian, on line three, because I love your caliber. Go for it. Tom, I love the 280 Remington. i got a Model 700, and I usually shoot a, a 140 grain. It'll take care of everything. It, it will. The, coyotes, two, two, good the 280 deer. is a great caliber. It is still underappreciated. Put 140 grain in it, 150 grain. 100, I, I would probably shoot 160 grain in it for elk and moose. Um, doesn't kick a whole lot. I mean, it's it's kind of like an odd six or a 308, but it's a 7 millimeter. So there you go. I mean, of course, you get the same thing almost in a 7 mm 8 and that's what I carry a lot. If you have a favorite, by all means, let us know what's going on. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a, uh, a gun company that's making something pretty darn interesting. I think you're going to want to know more about this. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. 